the discussion is that understanding of the customer in terms of their behaviors like buying behaviors uh, like and needs uh, behaviors and needs yes like for instance uh, when they wake up how do they behave from morning to evening actually is the entire 24 hours because our products are used by customers when they wake up until when they wake up again so if you have a product that they need in the morning like that toothpaste what kind of toothpaste do they prefer? Why do they prefer it? Mm -hmm. uh, do they buy toothpaste from your shop because you are near? Or do they buy toothpaste from your shop because that's the one they want? People with sensitive teeth might, teeth might require toothpaste that work for sensitive tooth. But unfortunately, if you don't have one, they'll buy anything. Now, does that mean they'll come again next time? No, most likely they will go to a place where they can get the one they want. Now, if that place has many people with sensitive teeth, then you may as well be losing customers by not stocking sensitive uh, toothpaste, for example. So, if, if your product is in the breakfast, if your product is between breakfast and lunch, is when it is used. If your product is used over lunch hour, if your product is used after lunch but before dinner, if your product is used at dinner, after dinner, when people are sleeping, they could, if your product could be a bed sheet, your product could be a bed itself. You could perhaps introduce a mosquito, con, a, a mosquito killer that is used at night when people are sleeping. So a product meets the needs of a customer segment anywhere between when they wake up and when they wake up the following morning. They experience certain difficulties during that time that your product fills in. And you need to appreciate why your product should stand out against competing or possible competing products, existing or those that are yet to be produced. So it's up to the owner of, the, of, of, the, of, a, of a small business to appreciate that if I'm going to develop a product or distribute a product, then you need to understand what will keep your customers using it. How unique are they? Is it only a few of the people in that area or is it everyone? If it's not everyone, is it quality? Is it price? What is the inhibitor? What is it that is holding some from not using it when others are really using it? So without going behind to understand the reasons why some small number of people buy this product repeatedly, understanding who they are in terms of age, income, gender, and therefore what I can call drivers of that need, you will be selling to the mass market, hoping that those who buy uh, still exist in the mass market. And that is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk more about this art, the art of selling. Yes. What would be the right way to do sales? Because from what I hear uh, in the discussion, we have the approach of the mass market mm -hmm. and the approach of a, a very specific uh, customer with the specific needs. Yes. So, as an entrepreneur or a business person who is uh, getting to the market and want to grow the market, what would be the best way to approach sales? Anybody who is on a startup level, whose product is new, uh, whose product has not built a market demand, or whose product is going to compete existing products, need to be more focused on a market segment than products that have been there, that have been serving a wide segment, uh, one for the following reason. When a product is appropriately designed, I'm carrying a marker pen. This is a permanent marker pen. It is intended to write on, on paper. Then if I am producing something competing this marker pen, then I have to offer something better. I have to look at what is not working for this one. Is it that it dries up? It doesn't, is it that this writing section is poor, is weak, breaks? Because I have noticed a few that smudge. So you produce one that is differentiated. That is if the product is going to be in a space where there are other products that are competing it. But if, if, if the people worry about, for example, it gets hot, it spills over, then you create one that can't spill over. It will become a darling to people who live in hot places where these things spill over. If you have this thing in a cold place, like where I am, 
where even if I keep it in the pocket, it doesn't spill over. Then selling to me spill over doesn't bother me because it, 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 it have never been affected by the smudge. But it's very different for someone in the hotter part of Kenya to carry the same pen in the pocket without smudging. So what is it that differentiates your product will depend on the size of the market. If the market was clearly understood, then the product is a perfect market their need. Because then, that's what we're calling, I am proposing value to their problem. And the, the, the value is superior. The selling at this point is really identifying if the client has a, a purchasing power at that point. On the other point, where this product is produced for a mass market, then your first job is to find, to try to push something about this pen to everybody, whether they need it or not. So you are in the business of selling features, selling advantages. You are not selling any unique benefit. You are either selling a price, which you're basically saying that this thing is, is supposed to be 100 bob, I'm selling it for 50. So you're trying to get someone to lower their guard to buy it. But they, you are not assured of repeat buys from the same person. During school, when school days, when schools are about to open, it is very easy for parents to buy pens and pencils because at that point they are required. But once they have bought the first set of pens and pencils, they will be buying to replace existing ones. So if your pens are not of the quality, uh, their kid tries to sharpen them, they break. They are already very resistant to your product. They will go back to their tested product. So pushing a product in the mass market is about influencing purchase by every means. Usually you are playing with people's, men, uh, people's uh, buying, I mean buy, buying desire by changing their, 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 what I would call their priorities. You bring something to me because it's now 50 bob. I'm wondering why don't I buy it when it's 50 than wait to buy it at 100 later. So you, 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 your sales cannot be consistent because you will not always find me in that state where I am destabilized financially. So you are not necessarily, you, you've not matched the features of this product to the problems that it is solving for, for, for the client. You've not matched the advantage of this product to the problems it's solving for the specific client. You've not matched the benefits of this product to that specific client situation. So you are not locating a, a, a client who is unique, who just needs the product to be near them or to have a purchasing power. You are looking at people who might not have a matching need, a perfect matching need for the product, but then you, you, you do the influencing of change of their priorities. By every means, you use the price, you use, you use as many different reasons to influence the priority order of their purchasing power. And that makes selling very hard. You are selling randomly, you have to sell to almost 100 people to get 10 purchases. But it is much easier to sell to 10 and get 5 when the market segment is quite right. And why is it important in that segment to have sufficient number of people? Because there is a danger mm -hmm. where you can have people who want to buy your product, mm -hmm. but they are not in good numbers to be able to support your market. Yes, you can never develop a product for a segment that doesn't have adequate size. We don't call that a market segment. When the people who have a unique need are in a large enough number, you also check their distribution in terms of geography. Because otherwise, the product distribution will have to be very cost effective for example, home deliveries or deliveries by mail, whatever it is, it has to be, the delivery has to be very efficient for this product to reach people who are widely dispersed. I'll give you an example. Um, if you look at remote, remote areas uh, of Kenya, uh, think of Machakos County into, for example, Kitui County, where, which is more asal um, than, than the rest of, of Nairobi. There are people in all these places, we require banking services. And therefore, if you are offering some banking service that is online, the market segment exists. But look, where the physical distance is the first real problem. 
the travel is expensive and slow, people are more likely to adopt an online kind of banking than when people are more able to walk physically into your, into your, into your shop, particularly if adopting online banking has an extra cost. Uh, the people who are near you are less likely to take on that extra cost, except, of course, when it improves their convenience element substantially. So the person in the ASAL is not just using it for convenience, even though it delivers convenience. It is also because it's, it, is, it removes a major challenge, which is the physical travel. The, 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 the rough roads and the expensive cost of doing 100 kilometers, you are better off adopting a system that can enable you to access your bank without having to go. So a teacher teaching somewhere in Kitui, 100 kilometers away from Kitui, is better off on a on mobile banking platform than him having to come to Kitui to enter the bank or the SACO or the, or the microfinance institution. So the question then is, do we have enough numbers of such teachers? That's a question you ask. Uh, do we have enough numbers that this kind of distribution channel would then be cost effective? Because then otherwise there's no market segment. You are, you are discussing a few people who are available that the product cannot economically satisfy. But at the moment you realize that you have a, a huge number of people that can economically be served by that product and that delivery system and the cost of delivering it is efficient, then you have a, a market segment enough to, de to design this delivery for. The other way is to imagine that everyone needs online banking and then you make it available. And, and you saw here, we had ATMs. They were everywhere. I have not gone to one for two years, as much as I pass them every day. Why? Because the environment has changed. The same me is now older. I don't need money in my pocket every five minutes. And if I need it, then I have it off my phone. So because of the differences in the way we are doing things, there are older people who are still looking at um, an M-Pesa based system in a very different way. They only use it to deposit and to remove. But for me, I've, gone to, I've grown away and I, I represent a very large market segment that deposit, withdraw, and transact. So the, the very fact that this number is growing and is big already enables the suppliers of this service to make that channel available because they have a segment adequate to use that product and which can be grown can be acquired, can be expanded, and can be maintained. They know how to maintain us because there's a way we are behaving. They know how to acquire us because there's a way we are behaving and the way we can be reached. And all that aspects of customer relationship can be done. No small business grows without having a significant market. That significant market must need the product in their life system as an important element, not as a by-the-way element. Because that is what we get in the mass market, where someone buys the product today as a by-the-way, and they won't repeat a purchase. So you rely on many random purchases that make you look good. But when things change the way Corona has hit the market and the purchasing power has it really gone low, then those random purchases disappear. And a product meant for the mass market then suffers more than a product meant for um, I would call a defined market segment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that, Patrick. I think next time we can uh, look at the elements. Uh, I've seen a business like small businesses and startups who have good products that are in the market but are barely getting by. What I mean by that is that they're able to pay their bills in terms of rent, they're able to pay uh, their staff but they are not making money as per se. So they are almost kind of in a survival mode in a, in a situation whereby do I close shop or do I continue with this business? <laughs> they, they have to continue the experiment <laughs> and take the risk with the customer more than anybody else, particularly take the risk of understanding, understanding what is behind the buying behavior yeah. of the various customers mm -hmm. to be able to isolate uh, a segment that looks like people who buy their product regularly, and then go back and ask, yes. how are these people distributed? Where I am, country-wide, 
in a section of Kenya, then you are able to say, okay, if I produce this market, this product, this market exists for it. Mm -hmm. Why well, I'm saying we can discuss it um, more later because it might be also to do with the elements of costs yes. and uh, revenues, the way they are structured. Yes so that they might not be favoring the business. So I think we can dive more deeper into that uh, next time. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs>